Well, first I got to ask you your reaction to Hudgens and being let go. Well, we're certainly uh, <clears throat> not happy about it, but we are all aware when we get in this game that things like that happen. Um, it is not from lack of work. It's not from lack of preparation. As Sandy addressed it, I'm sure it's just the fact that sometimes you make change for change to try to shake things up. Um, this is by no means Dave Hudgens' fault, not whatsoever. Don't blame the players. Nobody, I've never been around anybody in the four years that Dave's been here that works harder or has m better things to say, works with the video, works with each and every guy, and they do the same. Um, it's about uh, you know trying to get the execution better, and so we'll see if a change helps. I guess I'll ask you about the game. Jacob DeGrom obviously pitched amazing. Uh, from where he started with five of the first seven base runners to where he finished getting seven innings, what, what could you say about that? Well, he was very good, Adam. You know, he... Uh, as, as I said in his first start, you know, I know the nerves were there the first start, but he got better through the game. Um, this by far, in his, in his brief time here, in his three starts here, obviously he didn't have his best stuff early in the game. It's certainly command, you know, uh, in command of his off-speed stuff, which you've got to have up here. Um, and all he kept doing stayed with it. And, and you know what? You don't see young pitchers do that very often. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, just more generally, he had, I think, 122 pitches today. Rafael Montero has been going deeper into games. Zach had two games of 118 pitches apiece. Is that recognition of caution to the wind and, and let's just win these games? That's our best option to win these games? Well, that's what we said, Adam. We, we came in today. We knew what our bullpen situation was. We knew we were very thin. You got Matsu Zach out. You had Mejia out. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working familiar to death. Um, so we knew we had to get deep in the game, and, and the way Jake was throwing, he came off the, after the sixth and said he felt still felt great, and we knew that there was going to be a point in the seventh inning when we had to have somebody ready, um, and we had it set up, and you know he was absolutely brilliant, just did a great job. Next? Mike. Terry, uh, with Dave Zouster, do you personally take this as a warning shot from the front office? As what, Mike? That. I mean, you, you could be next. Well, everybody could be next, Mike. This is part of the game, as I told you. You know, you, you know. You, let me tell you something. When when you're evaluated, you know where it starts in the mirror. That's where it starts. You know what kind of job you do. You know what, how you go about your job. And at the end of the day, you know what? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But don't think for one second there's not a guy in there that realizes this is part of it. We just released one of the one of the best professionals I've ever been around in my life, and Jose Laverde. <laughs> happens. You deal with it. And if you can't, you don't belong in the game. Terry, can you just talk about the decision to send Valverde out there for uh, the eighth? He was the closer today. I thought that was the time to use the closer. If I use Torres, I'm out of pitching. And I was going to come and get you, Tim, next. You were the next guy out there. I know you got a lot of issues with your own here, and you can't worry too much about the kids on down below. But with Syndergaard now getting his elbow checked out, where are you with him and and the organization? I mean, and how concerning is that? Well, it's very we're very concerned about it, obviously, Kevin. I mean, I don't know too many guys that. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I know a lot of guys that go to the doctor and it's nothing, but I know some that go to the doctor and it's an issue. So anytime you're going in and, and you, the, the word elbow shows up, especially when you throw as hard as he does, it's a concern. Terry, I, I guess probably you can't really answer this until he's in. He's here. Lamar's here for a few weeks, but you know him. The philosophy is organization-wide. So what Correct. can he do differently that isn't being done now? Kevin, you know, that's, again, you know, once in a while, you know, we do it. You do it throughout every industry and every, and every job there is in the world. You know, you may say the same thing, but differently. To say, you know, to, to have maybe Lamar can come in here and say what Dave says in a different manner, a different way, and maybe gets through. Or maybe the fact that, you know, Dave not here, these guys all of a sudden realize, hey, look, I need to kick it in here. I don't know. I mean, just throwing it out there. But once in a while, you make change to, again, to have a different voice. Um, I know you're asked about this all the time, but given the fact that uh, it is an organizational philosophy, given the fact that City Field is so imposing, I mean, is is a new coach 
sort of confined in a sense as to just what he can accomplish? Well, Greg, I will tell you, coaching's a, coaching's a, a great occupation. A great occupation. It's a blast. These guys, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 65 years old here. And you know what? I don't feel a day of it because you hang around 25-year-olds all your life. And But once in a while, you know, you know you can reach some guys and some guys you can't. And what we've thought right now is that, you know what, maybe we just need somebody else and maybe can reach them. Obviously, due to the, the size of the field, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with our approach. We get guys on base. It's about driving them in. That's what it comes down to. And it's about when your drive runs in. I mean, I just watched, you know, you watch some of the great hitters in the game, and they're not one-dimensional kind of guys. They get singles when you need singles. They hit homers when you need homers. Uh, and what we that's what we've got to start doing. And just maybe, again, just a shake-up may get things torched around. I don't, there's no guarantees, but... Uh, Certainly, as I said, it's certainly not. This is not Dave's fault. Yeah, uh, just on the reverse call at home plate, were you aware that Russell Martin was illegally blocking the plate? And what's your uh, clarity on that rule? Well, I wasn't. I had no idea. Again, I, I got a bad seat when it comes to that stuff. But I went out and I challenged both ends of the play. I challenged the blocking that he was blocking the plate, and I also challenged the fact that I thought the hand got in first. Um, the decision came down that it was the blocking of the plate that. So therefore, I I still retained my my challenge. It didn't didn't matter. So, but that I just went out again, which you can do now, and that's why, you know, in the long run, this is going to work. This the, this challenge, the review of this system is going to work. But yeah, I just went out and challenged both. They came over and said, "Hey, look, it's the blocking of the plate." So.